Hi, my name is Benji with Earthright Mid-Atlantic, and today I'm going to be going over the Solar Edge monitoring app on your mobile device. Right here, I'm going to open up the My Solar Edge app. And if you have not logged in yet, you will first have to, or a login screen will open up, and you can use the same login credentials that you create from when you first get the registration email from Solar Edge. But once you log in once, usually you can have it save your password and then it will instantly open up to your site. So just to give you a little bit of an overview about what we're first lo looking at here is usually you have your name and then you can always have sharing details. So if you wanted to, you could send this into an email or share it on social media. I mean, the access is up to you. Right up here at the top, you have a, this little graphic of the sun, uh, your solar production, your home, and the grid. So let me break this down for you a little bit. So right up here in the top left corner, you have your production for today. Up here in the right hand corner, you'll see there's a sun and it says 72 degrees. So that will actually show you what your cur the current weather is at your site. So if you happen to be out of town or you're on vacation and you pull this up, that will actually show you what the weather is like at your site. So this big circle right here in the center, the largest one, that is what your system is actually producing right now at this very moment. So you'll see that from that large circle and from the actual solar array, we have this little arrow pointing down to the inverter. That's this box right here in the center. Now some of the power is actually going into the home for self-consumption. So during the day, as your solar is producing, a lot of people don't realize that your home can actually self-consume power. So while your home is self-consuming, you're not pulling from the grid. So it completely cuts the grid out as the middle man, and it goes directly to powering your home. Now, obviously this home is not using all the power that's being generated. It's only using 0.17 kilowatts. The rest of the power is actually being exported to the grid. So you'll see right here, you have these little green arrows and green means that it's going into the home. And then at night, these little arrows will change color and they'll be orange. And you'll see that these arrows will reverse and you'll see the direction coming from the grid back to the house. So right underneath that, you have a, some statistics. So you have what has been produced this month, what's been produced this year, and what's been produced over the lifetime, lifetime of the system. Now this system, because it was installed this year, you'll see that both this year and lifetime are the same. That's because it has not gone over one year yet. Now underneath that, we have a few different views. You can go click on day, week, month, year, or what you can do is you can try to make this match up to your billing cycle. So if you click billing, you could say like, for example, my billing starts on April, and it starts on the fifth of the month. Now you can find this out by looking at your power bill. Your power bill will actually tell you what the billing cycle is. So some people's bills might be from the fifth to the fifth or from the 10th to the 10th. So you can actually look at your power bill to adjust the view so then you can pair your production to what was on your bill. So for right now, I'm going to just go for the day view. So this is what has been produced today. So you'll see that you have two columns here. You have production and then you have consumption. Production is what your system is making and consumption is what your home consumes. Now these two columns are broken down even further. So you'll see that so far today, this system has produced 17.2 kilowatt hours. Now of that 17.2 kilowatt hours, 2.02 kilowatts have been self-consumed. So that's actually power that went directly from your solar panels to your inverter directly powering your home. And then you'll see that the self-consumption on this side will always match the self-consumption on this side. So in this instance, 15.2 kilowatt hours is sent back to the grid. Therefore, this homeowner has saved up 15.2 kilowatt hours worth of credits for that day. Now you'll see over here on the right hand side is consumption. This home has required 4.16 kilowatt hours today. 
So this home actually hasn't required a lot of power today. It could be that the homeowner is out of town or away from work, they work long hours. These numbers will look different for everybody. But out of what the home has required, to almost half, actually just a little bit less than half, has actually been um, powered by self-consumption. So this homeowner has only pulled 2.14 kilowatt hours from the grid. At the end of the day, really, if you're trying to keep track of what credits you have with a power company, um, one of the indicators you can use is if you take what was sent to the power company and you subtract what was pulled from the power company. So this homeowner right here has a balance of about 13 kilowatt hours. So they still have credits. And the whole idea is, you know, in the warmer months, and we're going into spring now, at least when I'm filming this video, um, we're going to the spring. And so the spring, summer, and fall, those are the better producing months, especially summer. So you build up all those credits, and then those credits help you in the winter months. So there will be some days, like if I go back, let's see, I know. So see this day, there was a little bit more weather, so the consumption and production were a little bit closer. But then there are some days, like this is a very rainy, stormy day. Consumption was way higher than production. But this homeowner, because most days they're building up credits, that would offset the consumption needed for that home. So that's why solar is so beneficial in Virginia is because you're allowed to have net credits with the power companies. So let me go ahead and jump back to today. Underneath that graph, this is where you can actually see um, a timeline of your production. So you'll see that production started at right about, it looks like 7.15, it was producing a little bit. So somewhere probably around 7 a.m. is when it started to produce. And then you can actually track the production. So we're right about the peak. Right now it is 2.36 in the afternoon. And so as the day progresses, this will slowly curve down and production will slowly decrease. So this system, if we're about the halfway mark, if we continue to have a bright sunny day, um, this number will probably double. Now, if you look at consumption in the early hours of the morning, a lot of times some people you'll see spikes and that could be an HVAC unit kicking on, or if you happen to get up in the night and you go to the restroom and you turn on the lights, you'll see some um, different spikes of consumption, but this is a way that you can actually use to monitor what your home is consuming. Late at night or like three in the morning, if suddenly you see large spikes of continued power usage, that can be an indicator that something in your home like a refrigerator or water heater, something could be not working properly. An HVAC unit might be an emergency mode or something. Um, just something to keep an eye on. Now, if you go down to the bottom here, it's comparative production. So what this will do is it'll show you the production from month to month, quarter to quarter, or year to year. Now this system was just installed recently, so we don't have a lot of data to compare, but we have some homeowners who have, their, have had their systems for four or five years. They have a lot of data to compare over time. And then the last thing down here at the bottom, environmental benefits. This just shows from your system, this has saved um, 978.4 pounds of CO2 emissions, which is equivalent to seven trees. So this number will continue to go up as you continue to produce clean energy with your solar. So one other thing that I wanted to show you real fast is down here at the bottom. This is the panel layout. You can actually see a live example of what each individual panel is producing right at this moment. Now this is a ground mount system, so everything's lined up perfectly for this homeowner, but you might have several different arrays. So I hope that helped. That was just a quick little rundown over the My Solar Edge app. I hope that helped explain the difference between production, consumption, and then remember self-consumption. That's a big part that sometimes people get confused on, so I just wanted to cover that. And of course, if you still have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to our office and we would be happy to help you.